Well, I don't think I can afford to take another chance, Ita. I will do all I can, sir. Yes, well, I trust your discretion. Now, look, contact my lawyer and have the paperwork drawn up this morning. As you wish, sir. Keep in touch. Good morning, love. Good morning. Who was on the phone? Oh, uh, business. Worldly affairs. Darling, whoever it is that's been threatening you, it's obvious they're going to make their move during the wedding. And we shall prevent any such thing from happening. But... But, Rachel, but... Under these circumstances, we must be like the boy scouts. We must be prepared. So I've made arrangements this morning to guarantee your safety and your security in the event of my demise. Keep your pants on. I'm coming. Oh. Oh. <laughs> a bad time, huh? No, five minutes ago would have been a bad time. Uh -huh. You going your way to see Amanda? No, uh, for you. Um, you saved my life last night. I'm here to show my appreciation and ask you for an encore. Uh, what? You forgot to give a speech again? No. No, but uh, Northwestern's uh, commencement speech could use some emergency surgery. All right, let's have a look. <clears throat> I really am sorry to, uh, to pop in on you so early. Oh, I don't mind getting an early start. I'm just surprised you didn't ask Amanda to help you. Well, she had to be at the office. Oh. Well, I guess then you bumped your director of press relations to the top of the list. You are always at the top of my list, Lorna. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I guess I should get out of this wet towel, then. Oh, really? I think it's quite becoming. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I could start a trend. <laughs> How can they keep Mama in this place overnight? Now the police won't even let me visit her. Well, maybe it's better that you keep your distance anyway. You're only going to upset her again. You know, I know that it was Kate who screamed at me. But I feel like it's Mama who hates me. Come on, Josie, you know better than that. Yeah, in my head. I mean, this is crazy. They won't give me any information. They said I'm not family. I mean, you saw the way she was last night. How much more of this can she take? Maybe not much, and maybe that's good. What do you mean? Your mother said some very revealing things to me last night. What did she say? I'm not even sure that she's aware of it. But I believe that Kate is in touch with Charlie. Here's your breakfast. I can't eat that. that you don't hurt like my stomach. You don't like the food? You can go on a hunger strike. Maybe I will. Fine. Starve. See if I care. do anything. I'll be anybody. Any way you want me to be. Just get me out of here. Kate, I'm doing everything I can. I know you are, no, and it just isn't your problem, John. I talked to a friend of mine in the DA's office. Hopefully, she can get me in to see the judge. Look, I got, I got to check on Tomas and Luisa. You know, are they okay? They're fine. I checked with them this morning. Tomas must be worried sick about the baby. Miss Shaw and Child Welfare have made arrangements for Luisa to stay with the Griffins. The people who want to adopt. Them. No, John, no. Now that is what I was afraid of. Now you you gotta get me out of here so I can get we can fight this. Just, thing. just give it some more time. Kate. Now, now, how many times have we said that? Just give it time, and that's what I've given it. Now I'm about to lose my kids. Kate. 
Kate, I, I want to ask you a question. Last night, you said that Charlene was gone and she was never coming back. How would you know that? Don't listen to me, John. You, you told me that I should forget all about Charlene, that you were the strong one. Kate, what did you mean? idea right out of your head. No one is going to get killed. Now, last night you were adamant about our plans. And I still am. But last night the threat came here, into your home. Why are you giving in to I'm it? not, Rachel. I'm not. All I want to do is to make sure that you are safe and secure because I love you, silly. What are you planning? Well, we have to be practical, so I've, um, I've made arrangements. I've contacted my lawyer and asked for a codicil to be placed on my last will and testament. Why? Well, apart from providing for Ryan and Victoria, wherever she may be, I need to know that your interests are well protected. Well, darling, I'm hardly penniless. No, no, no. No, I know you don't need my money, but you will need the Corey shares that I've acquired so that you can retain control. Darling, that's so important. You must lead the company and lead your family. I mean, that's what Mac wanted, isn't it? And that's exactly what I would want to, if anything were to happen to me. Ah, oh, look, darling, it's the least I can do to repay you for the faith and the trust that you've shown me. I'll do the same. I beg your pardon? If you're going to change your will, I'll change mine. No, I will leave Rachel. you in control of Corey in order that the company continue. And you will be in charge of the legacy, the legacy from Mac, to see that it's shared equitably between the grandchildren and the children. Rachel. Rachel, that's an awesome responsibility. Yes, and one that you will carry out with fairness. And with good judgment. The idea of being bereft of you. Let's not dwell on it. I don't know what to say. Say that you will do this for me and my family. I shall do all in my power to be worthy of it. I love you. And I love you. All right. All right, I'll call Cass at the office and, and talk to his assistant and have them draw up the papers this afternoon. Memorial Day was hell. Stayed up late rereading my novel. I should have barbecued the thing. I hate to say it, but Marshall Kramer III was right. It's dreadful. Even Lorna knew it. Of course, she thinks it's her fault. Mother can't write romance after daughter's rape. I told her not to blame herself. <sighs> Maybe it's true. Last night, I sat down at the typewriter. My fingers felt like they were slodging through mud. Words lurched out. Definitely not romantic. Definitely not Felicia Gallant. I wrote about Lorna and the rape. Little by little, all the pain and anger came, and the words started spelling out onto the page. I 
felt sick at all of it. But I couldn't stop. Who am I kidding? Passing myself off as this glamorous writer, this fabulous storyteller. What's glamorous about riding in a ratty old feather boa? Downing a bottle of Chardonnay? None of my stories were true. The storyteller is a drunk. And the worst part is, even now, I would kill for a drink. Judy, it's Felicia. I'm, uh, I'm sitting here fantasizing about peppermint schnapps, if you can believe it. Patty, when you get this, call me, okay? I need you. You all right, Felicia? Yeah, I'm fine. You don't look fine. Well, that's your fault. <laughs> the way you chew up riders and spit them out, what do you expect? May I come in? Sure. Do I have a choice? You working? Look, why don't we cut right to the chase? You were right. My book is a dog. Even Jake McKinnon took a little sniff and walked away. I got another rejection. Well, that must make your heart feel nice and warm, doesn't it? I mean, if you had a heart. Oh, <clears throat> you know, I'm expecting a very important call. I'll just take it in the other room. Feel free to let yourself out. I can't go back to business as usual, not after what happened last night. Why not? It was just the usual. Corey, family, dinner party, lots of squabbling, and no one staying for dessert. Last night's blackout was not typical. Mom doesn't usually find death threats in her bedroom. Yes, I suppose it was rather unnerving. Look, I understand that Carl has enemies. I mean, Lord knows we all wanted to do him in at one time or another, but for now, for all intents and purposes, he is staying in our home. I mean, any attempt on his life is going to be a risk to our whole family. I know that, Amanda. I was in New York when Rachel was almost decapitated, remember? It's bad enough that I could lose my mother, but now my daughter is in danger. Look, Ali will be fine, believe me. Amanda, I've decided that I'm going to really try and accommodate Carl. For Rachel's sake and the sake of the family and the business. Iris. I never thought you would back down, especially when it came to Carl. Don't misunderstand me. I will never forget what Carl did. And Daddy would never want him sitting in his seat, either in the boardroom or at the family table. But we can't do anything about it. It's what Rachel wants. We have to support her. Come on, Iris. Between us, is this really how you feel? Absolutely. <laughs> In fact, you know what? 
I am so sincere that I am going to go shopping with Rachel today for her wedding gown. You're going to help her buy the dress that she's going to marry Carl in? Yes, I am. Amanda, darling, we have to resign her. Hey, you know what? I've got a great idea. Why don't you and Ali come with us to shop for the wedding dress? No, I don't think so. That would be way too much of a downer. Thank you very much. Oh, come on. You might get a few ideas for your own wedding. Actually, uh, well, since Vicky ran off with the baby, Grant and I have decided to postpone our wedding for a while. Oh, no, Amanda, you can't do that. That's a terrible mistake. Take it from me. When it comes to marriage, he who hesitates is lost. Ah, dressed for work? I think better when I'm comfortable. So, be comfortable and uh, work your magic. It's too bad you couldn't convince your fiancé to become your full-time speechwriter. I respect Amanda's career and my constituents will respect her as a working woman and a working mother. You've got all the angles figured out, don't you? My decision to marry Amanda Corey isn't based on politics. I want us to be a family. And you love her? Yes. Yes, of course I do. Well, then that's what the speech needs. Fatherhood, commitment, love, all of those warm, fuzzy family values. Can you improvise? Oh, I can write this copy blindfolded, Grant. You're the one who's got to feel it. Oh, I feel it. You know, you really are very, very good at this, Lorna. It's what you pay me for. No, but you helped me to make a human connection. You helped me to speak from the heart. That's never been my strength. It's always easier to put it down on paper, especially when it's not about yourself. That mean it's harder when your own feelings are on the line? That is probably Felicia checking up on me. Excuse me. Spencer. Oh, uh, excuse me, Lorna. I stopped by Grant's office. Oh, there you are. Hello, Dad. What's up? Yes, I was wondering if there's uh, any news on uh, on Vicky. Well, I thought that I could um, find Victoria if I put a tail on Ryan. And fortunately, the private investigator lost him. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, if I hear from Ryan. Uh, Maybe I can convince him to contact yeah, Well, I won't expect any help from Ryan, but I will depend upon the authorities to bring my son home. Meanwhile, I'm keeping busy. Yes, well, uh, that's wise. Mm. Well, if you excuse me, I'm going to go get dressed. Okay. Don't even think about it. Kate, you didn't answer my question. You said that you were the strong one. What did you mean? Is that what I said? Listen, I, I know that you were upset. But... No, upset doesn't have coverage on. I was terrified of being locked in here. I heard those metal doors clang shut, and I just about flipped my lid. Uh, listen, it's okay. I, I was just trying to understand what you were saying. And I don't, John, it, it beats me. You know, and, and if I can't even remember it, then why don't we just both just forget about it? Kate, you said that Charlene was gone. What did you mean? Obviously, she's gone. She's not here, is she? <laughs> why would you say that you were the strong one? I don't, John, maybe, I, I guess I was talking about being in jail, that, 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 that I... That I was strong enough to handle it. That uh, that if the police had to punish someone, it shouldn't be the kids. It should be me. Oh, please, John. If you care about me at all, please just help me. Just, I've got to look after my kids. Okay. Of course I care about you. Stop asking all these questions and, and get me out of here. Well... I've uh, just finished talking to Cass's office, and they're going to have the papers drawn up and ready to be signed by the end of the day. Rachel, I've had a bit of a rethink. Now, this is such a major 
decision for you. I think you should give yourself a bit more time. No. No, I want this settled before we're married. Rachel. You're not talking you around, is it? No. All right. All right, then we'll clear up all this unpleasantness and then we shall fly to New York and our honeymoon. Oh, that sounds delightful. Oh. Oh. The sooner we finish our business here in Bay City, the better. Mm -hmm. I have a call through to my lawyer. Come on, let's jolly him along, shall we? I'm going shopping. You're going to buy some frillies. Mm. <laughs> Hello, Rachel. Hello, Iris. Uh, why aren't you at the office? What a peculiar question to ask of your CEO. <laughs> I decided to take the morning off. I wanted to spend it with this woman here. My beautiful, beautiful bride to be. Isn't she lovely? Yes. Of course she's lovely. Lovely. So what have you two lovebirds been up to? Oh, I'm just, um, working on some last-minute details. Details, details. What details could you possibly have forgotten? Now, I hope you two have a lovely shopping spree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll miss you, though. Miss you. Mm. Already. Mm. Come on, let's go. Rachel, what's going on? Nothing. Uh, why were you and Carl in such a huddle? Oh, Iris. Shopping first, gossip later. Are you deliberately trying to jeopardize your future with Amanda? I think I resent your implication. I take my commitment to Amanda very seriously. My interest in Lorna Devon is purely professional. Then why don't you meet with her at your office? And why doesn't she dress for work? Do you know how it looks? I don't care how it looks. Lorna is on call 24 hours a day, and this was an emergency. Do you know, son, there's a definite pattern here, and you're not even aware of it. Oh, be ridiculous. Now, hear me out. Lorna is exactly the kind of woman you always fall oh, for. Oh, and what kind of woman is that? You're drawn to impulsive women with a wild streak. <laughs> and a, a touch of trash about them, like Paulina, and uh, the Charlie version of Charlene. Now, that was a mistake, and you know it. And why were you attracted to Vicky? Not for her mind, v I suspect. Victoria had a keen... I'm not going to discuss this with you. Grant, Lorna is an overtly sexual woman. Now, do you deny that you're attracted to her? Well, that's immaterial, isn't it? Because, as you pointed out, I'm engaged. Since when has propriety ever stopped you? Vicky was engaged to your brother when you started your affair with that her. That's a completely different situation. You had every reason to know that you were making a mistake with Vicky, but you couldn't stop yourself. And look where it led. I was in love with Victoria when I married her, and I was not the one who broke that commitment. But now you're committed to Amanda. Your life is finally back on track. Amanda is right for you in ways that Vicky never was. She's the perfect match. The perfect political wife. Don't put your future at risk now. That's not what I'm doing, Dad. Then why delay your marriage to Amanda? I've made my decision. Can we just drop this? Hello, guys. Hi. Hello. How's it going? Fine, Lord. Good, good, good. Fine, just fine. Yeah, good. Well, uh, you, uh, you both have work to do, yes. so I'll get out of your yes, way. We do. Thank if you're free for lunch uh, later, Grant, uh, I'll be at the Harbor Club. Oh, good, good. Yes. Good. Goodbye. All right. Well, I guess I'd better be leaving as well. I certainly wouldn't want to, uh, you know, monopolize your time. What are you running away for, Grant? You're just getting warmed up. I have some hot ideas for the speech. Oh, Lorna, you've already been a big help, and I certainly wouldn't want to impose. Oh, it's no problem. It's my job. Well, I have a very busy afternoon, and I really should be getting back to the office. Did I miss something, Grant? Did you have an argument or something? No, what? Well, I don't know what you're running away from, unless you find my work habits a little freewheeling. Freewheeling? How about wild and impulsive? You, you didn't happen to overhear my father when you were waiting upstairs, did you? 
My nose gets itchy when I hear people talk about me. I, I had to scratch. You know, you mustn't take what my father says seriously. He has a habit of being overprotective. Oh, of I'm not career. offended. I've elevated a racy reputation to an art form, and frankly, I'm proud of it. Oh, I see. So that's just a cover, huh? I think so. Don't forget, I've seen you in your more vulnerable moments. Let's let that be our little secret. I have my image to maintain. I see. The hardest nails businesswoman. Oh, I'm tough. But I do like to indulge myself from time to time. And we have that trait in common, don't we? I knew there was something I liked about you. My father was right. You are, um, very appealing. I heard something about overtly. <laughs> Which I guess is a plus in my business. PR, I mean. I suppose it is, yes. Oh, I'm... I'll give you a copy of the speech later on. If you find any changes you'd like to make, you can just uh, fax me. See what I can do. Thanks for your help, Seth. Thanks for the flowers. And, Senator, the next time you come by, could you, could you call first? I'd like to be ready for you. are the best of our Paris shows. Well, they're just lovely. This neckline is interesting, don't you think? I think I'm looking for something simpler. Oh, I may have the perfect one. Let me see about the size. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Oh, Rachel, look at this. Isn't it right out of a fairy tale? It certainly is for a first-time bride who believes in fairy tales. Iris? Oh, I'm such a sentimental old fool when it comes to weddings. Well, you can't be getting misty-eyed over Carl and me. No. That's just when I see this dress. I think about Hank. Oh, has he been on your mind a lot? Yes, well, if our relationship had worked out, I would have been a married mum by now. I would have been packing bag lunches and making TV dinners and, uh, well... Can you just picture it? Well, why don't you call him? No. It's too late. I miss my wedding. What? Yes. Hank and Tommy called the judge and ordered the flowers. And I stood them up. Why did you stand them up? Because I was at the office, Rachel. Because it was Carl's first day as chairman of the board. And Jake was handcuffed to the desk. And I was dealing with a media circus. I had no idea you were missing your own wedding. Well, I couldn't think of anything but the impending destruction of Daddy's company, could I? You must I have... didn't... I didn't have time to focus on the man I loved. You must have been furious with both me and Carl. Yes, I was. Well, at the time, you know, it doesn't really matter now. I didn't understand how very important my family and the business are to me. Iris, I know how important that company is to you, but that shouldn't have I interfered with your relationship. Well, Hank wanted to be the only man in my heart. But he would have to have shared it with Daddy. Is that so awful? You know, it's, it's been so hard for me to let go of Mac. It's been hard for me to even admit to myself that he's really gone. But by the time I was ready to move on, I'd realized, in spite of what you think, that I wasn't being unfaithful to him. Rachel, do you really believe that? Yes, I do. We loved each other, Iris. He would want me to be happy. And he would want that for you, too. He would want you to move on. Maybe someday you'll realize that. The call took longer than I thought. And I really didn't think you'd still be here. How dare you? You have no right snooping through my private papers. 
I, I wasn't snooping. The pages fell on the floor. I'm sure you gave them a push. No, Felicia, I thought they were new pages from your novel. I started reading and I couldn't stop. This is a violation of my privacy. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but what you've captured here is so incredibly wonderful. Felicia, all the suffering that you went through when your daughter was raped, you've captured it perfectly. Which proves that my instincts about you are right, that you've got a great book in you. When you get under the skin and you write about what you know, and you write it from your heart... I wrote this for myself. Do you understand that? For myself! So I could make some sense of what happened to Lord. Right now, I feel as violated as she was. That wasn't my intention. I want you out of here. I want you out of here right now. Okay, fine. We always seem to have a breakdown in communications anyway. <sighs> Goodbye. Felicia. I am very serious about your writing. Please look at me. You've got a great book in you. Now, if you want to talk about it with me, hear my ideas. As an editor, call me tomorrow. That's if you've got the guts. said that she's keeping Charlene down. The very fact that she's a non No, you know, it's worse always. than that. It's like Kate's keeping Mom a prisoner. Look, my worst fear has always been that the personality of Charlene would disappear completely. But now I know that's not going to happen. If anything, she's trying to send us a signal. Like, sooner or later, Kate is going to have to acknowledge that Charlene is part of her. Well, how can we make that happen sooner and not later? Listen, Judge Aronson wanted to have her committed. Oh, great. But Dr. Bradford said it wouldn't be a good idea. So, what are we going to do? I talked to Dana Kramer at the DA's office. This might be tricky, but I think I can pull it off. What? What are you planning? I'm going to need a little time alone with Kate. And with any kind of luck, Charlene will be home with us soon. Hey. Lorna. Why would you think it was you? I probably should have called first. I hate surprise visits myself. No, any visit from you, I love you know that. How about I I take you out to lunch, Mother? I I feel like I owe it to you after what I said to you about your book being lousy. Hey, no, you don't. You know what? It's Drek. You were right. <laughs> hey, what is that? Are you doing some rewriting? No, actually, I'm thinking about kicking the habit. Um, writing, I mean. <laughs> Mother, you can't do that. You are too talented. No, I, I think it's too much trouble, actually. Anyway, listen, you know, I have a great idea. I don't feel like getting all glamorous. Why don't we just call Tops, have Franco send something down, okay? Something wickedly fattening. <laughs> we can kick off our shoes, we can sit here, relax, have a little girl talk. What do you say? You are in a very strange mood today. What's going on with you? Nothing. Can I just sit here with my daughter and have a talk? So tell me, how's it going finding a man of, <gasps> to have your little fling with? Oh, Mother, I am telling you I can take care of myself, okay? Heart and body. I think this is a mistake. I do. Yeah, well, it's a mistake that I'm going to make and one that I plan to enjoy. You know what I'm most worried about? That you're going to find the perfect man. And then you won't be able to make a commitment. Oh, don't worry, Mother. I have a feeling the perfect man for me won't want to make a commitment either. Dee Dee said you needed a break. I thought you had a meeting. The meeting is over quicker than I thought, so I came over here to tempt you into having lunch. I'd love to order you lunch, but I don't think the food would get here on time. I would have to leave. Who said anything about food? All I need for sustenance is you. Um, Grant. Hmm? Maybe... Indulge me. Please. Amanda's 
Kate's going to just love that. You think so? Absolutely. I'm so glad you decided to splurge. I just hope Carl likes it. Oh, he'd be blind not to. Yes, he does. He adores it. <gasps> You're not supposed to see this until the wedding. Well, I only caught a glimpse. Well, you're not going to catch any more I'd never put a jinx on us, anyway. Well, you can't see it until then. I'm going to put it away. Why, you're marrying a peeping Tom. Yes, I am. I mean, it could be worse. That's an hey, understatement. Hey, Iris, what's that? Oh, nothing. So, has it been busy around here today? Oh, yes, it's a very busy household, isn't it, Iris? Now, I have to make a private call. So, uh, would you be a good lassie and, uh, maintain my privacy, would you? I have a delivery for Rachel Corey. Uh, she's busy at the moment. Here, I'll sign for it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. You've gone too far. Are you completely losing your mind? Wait, uh, we can't. Not here. Why not? Why not? I'll tell you what. I'll lock the door and we'll tell Dee Dee to hold all of your calls. <sighs> because I don't want to wait. What has gone into uh, you today? Help it if my beautiful, sensuous, alluring fiance turns me on. What has gotten you so hot and bothered? What's your problem today? What? I don't have a problem today. Oh, ever since I came in here, you've been jumpy. Oh, no. You didn't want to go out to lunch. And then you ordered the most sinful dessert you could think of, which could only mean that you must be in the proverbial dumps. Marshall Kramer the Third, the literary louse. He was here. Oh, he's giving you a hard time about your book again? He had the gall to go through my private papers. You're kidding. Yeah, I caught him red-handed. And then he had to do a tap dance. He started to praise me up to the skies, laying it on with a trowel. Maybe he liked what you wrote. He's worried about losing his top-selling author. It's a publisher's little trick, honey. What was it that you wrote, exactly? It was personal. No one is supposed to read it. Least of all, a stranger. So maybe Marshall wants you to write something more personal? <laughs> he thinks that I have a great novel in me, that I'm sort of an untapped Emily Bronte. If that wasn't such a pathetic ploy, it would actually be funny. Why is it a ploy? What does he want? He wants me to have a meeting with him. Maybe he actually wants to help you write a different kind of novel. I have no intention of writing one word. Not for him. Why? Are you afraid to fail, Mother? Or is it that we'll see the real you? Believe me, I'm more than happy to have you out of here. I might go into court. Would you, would you send the post? I'll tell you later. John, if you got some news, don't, don't keep me in suspense. I made arrangements for your release. I don't understand. You got me released. John, What did you tell the judge? It's more what the judge told me. There's a condition to you. Condition? What money did, would you have to give no, money no, for me? No, no, it's not money. You've been released in my custody. Rachel, you can't be a sound mind and body and be thinking of amending your will. Is this my will? This is none of your business. Oh, yes, it is. This affects the business. 
It affects the entire Corey family. I can't believe you weren't thinking of consulting us on this. This is my decision. What? How could you even imagine thinking of leaving everything to Carl, all your stock? He's going to be my husband, Iris. So that gives him the power to control everything? Only if I predecease him. Rachel, what... What if all those threats come from Carl? What if this whole thing has been a setup? I'm going to marry the man. I trust him. You trust him? And what happens if you marry him? And you have a little accident, Rachel? What then? Then he will take care of the company and the family just fine, Iris. Don't you see what you're doing? You're giving him the power to ruin us. All that's left of, all that's left for him to do then is to get you out of the way. Now, have the papers been delivered from Cass Winthrop's office? Yes, sir. My special messenger. They should have arrived by now. And have Rachel's directions been followed? To the letter, sir. Good. Then all that remains is for Rachel to sign. I'm going to marry the man. I trust him with my life. Rachel, if you sign this, if you sign this document, it will be the end of us all. Tomorrow on Another World. Will John and Kate be swept away by their past feelings of passion? Plus, is it really over for Matt and Donna? Or will he find a way to win back her heart? Find out tomorrow on Another World, only on NBC Daytime.